Oops. Do not go to fill. I know. Okay. Keep keep running it under in. Are you sure? Yep. Even if it's gonna spray yep. all over? Yeah. <laughs> Sean and I were talking about oil changes and I was talk asking him about what it's like to do an oil change on a Nordhaven, um, how easy it is, what are all the things he needs, costs, all that stuff. And as he was explaining it to me, I thought to myself, God, that sounds so easy. I think I could even do it. So I said, God, that sounds so easy. I think I could do it. And I said, okay, why don't you do it? So. I think there's no better way to show how easy it is to do an oil change on a Nordhaven 43 than to have me do it. So let's get started. Ready to do an oil change? You betcha. And who's going to do it? You. Do you think it's easy enough that Mrs. Cap can do it? I think so. I think it'll be fun watching you do it. Okay. <laughs> Under here. This is our heating and air conditioning unit for the salon. And then back in this corner is where I keep oil. How many um, gallons of oil are we going to use for the oil change? Uh, between the en engine and the generator, we'll use six. And then I think uh, it's another half or three quarters of a gallon in the wing engine. How much does the oil cost per case? I have no idea. I think it's 17 bucks a gallon. 50, 50 to 60 bucks a case. It's probably two to $300 worth of materials to do an oil change on the wing, the main, and the generator. And what are we saving in terms of labor if uh, you or I wasn't doing this? Um, well, any shop would probably mark up the materials. So that $300 of materials is probably 500. And then if somebody estimates, I don't know, an hour or an hour and a half per engine, you know, they might have four to six hours worth of labor at $100 an hour. So I would imagine to have an oil change done by a shop, it's probably $1,000. Good savings. Yeah. Cool. It's good savings and it's a super easy job, so. All right, well, let's go see how easy yeah. this is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So the other things we need are filters. So we have an oil filter for the main engine. And our boat has a, uh, a lugger. It's a John Deere engine that's marinized by uh, Northern Lights or Lugger in Seattle. We need an oil filter for the generator, which is also uh, it's a Northern Lights product. And then we need an oil filter for our wing engine, which is a Yanmar engine, um, kind of like an engine that's commonly found in sailboats, probably 30 to 40 feet in size. All right, we're ready to start things up. So Elizabeth will start up the main engine first. Next we're going to start up the generator. So the top switch is the preheat and bypass switch. Push and hold that for about 10 seconds. Continue to hold that and now press the bottom switch up, which engages a starter. Release the bottom switch. Continue to hold the top switch until the engine uh, oil pressure is up, which it is now. Now you can release the bypass switch. So the generator is now running. Last thing to fire up is the wing engine. So. 
Why don't you go to the Yanmar? You're gonna turn the uh, key switch to on, and then you'll push and hold the start button. And then release the start button. Okay, everything is running. Freedom's main, generator, and wing engine all require oil and oil filter changes either every 200 operating hours or six months, whichever comes first. Today, I'm going to be well, let's be real here. I, along with the help of Sean, will be changing the oil and the oil filters on all three in three steps. First, we'll drain the old oil, then we'll change the oil filters before finally refilling each engine with brand new oil. And if you're wondering what we do with the old oil, we actually give it to Elliott Bay Marina so they can properly dispose of it. And while the engines are warming, I'm gonna prep our new oil filters by writing today's date and the number of hours on each respective engine so that next time there's always a backup record of when they were last changed in case Sean's detailed maintenance log mysteriously disappears. All set? Yep. Get this party started. We're so. back in the aft end of our engine compartment. The wall behind Elizabeth is the bulkhead to the lazarette. And right where her hand is, is where the oil pump used to be. We have a pump that automatically extracts the oil from our engines. I uh, relocated that so that I could put a toolbox in its place. So the new location is just behind the generator to the left. That's where our reverse oil change system is. So the first thing we need to do is take that black hose, which is the discharge hose, and you're gonna lead that hose uh, out into the front here. What we need to do is carefully unwrap uh, that fitting from uh, that hose from the bag. And there is a, um, a cap on the end of it. Hold it, uh, the bag end down like that. Okay, now take the bag off. It's not gonna leak that bad. Okay, I'll take the bag. Okay. Now that hose on the end of it, you have to unthread. There's a there's a cap on the end of it. This one? Yep. Okay. okay. And then you'll go ahead and just set that in the bucket. Okay. The next thing we want to do is let the uh, pump go ahead and pull the oil um, out. So what we first need to do is select which engine we want to pull oil from. So we'll do the main first. So there's three red knobs, Elizabeth, on the bottom of it. Uh -huh. One says- Wing main generator. Yeah, the one that says main, you want to rotate it 90 degrees. To the right or to the left? Uh, it only it will go one way, so rotate. Okay, so down, okay. And, and now that it should be vertical, the red knob, right? Yep. Okay, then under the uh, right end of it, there's a black switch that's covered up right now, so you have to open that that little folding door. This one? Yep. Open that up. Yeah. And then that okay. is a three-way switch. So down refills. We're not going to use that position. Uh, but if you go up, up. it's going to go to drain. If you go ahead and click drain, now the oil will start pumping from the main engine. Just about fill that up. So now we've removed the oil from the main engine and we've removed the oil from the generator. We have not removed the oil yet from the wing. The wing, the wing is not, on our boat, is not plumbed in uh, to that reverso unit. 
actually need to buy some fittings and do that at some point. Um, so we're going to do that with a manual pump. So the manual pump that we're going to use is over here. What I'm going to do is put a tube um, down into the dipstick tube. So over on this side of the engine is our dipstick. So if I pull the dipstick out, lay it down, and then I'm going to insert a tube down into the dipstick hole. This guy here. Insert the tube all the way down to the bottom. There you go. This here. If you watch on the hose right now, you'll see the oil actually coming out of it. You can actually stop and it'll continue to kind of keep, uh, keep suction going. If you, watch, if you watch, you'll see the level increase on the container too. Well, it's a good way to get a workout in, you know, a little upper body. Right. Some biceps, you know. Triceps, forearms. <laughs> Is it all done? Or are you wait? Are you just letting no, it drain? Right. When it gets to the end, you'll hear it. It'll start drawing air. It'll make a gurgling noise. So far, not so bad. Um, pretty easy. But like everything, it's not fast. I was under the impression that this was gonna be like boom, 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 done. It's uh, definitely a two-hour, two to three-hour job. So easy, but takes a little time. But overall, not bad. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, Sean. What's uh, that air came up? Yep, I mean, it's getting to the end. Do we need to do anything? No. It'll just convulse? Yep. Soil filter is mounted horizontally, sideways. Yeah. Which means when we take it off, it makes a mess. So one thing, so one thing we can do is once we get it cracked loose, we can tuck a bag in and we can turn it and remove it into the bag. Okay. Okay. So the bag catches the oil. So the first thing that we need to do though is just crack it loose so that we're able to finish it by hand. Okay. So to crack it loose, um, you know you're gonna go to the left. Yeah, but I you'll think use, you should probably just do this. You'll use the filter wrench. I don't want to have. I don't want to be responsible for spray everywhere. That's okay. Cool, yes. handy. Yeah, I gotta go the other way. Yep. Turn the filter. Given the potential for quite a big mess and years of a guilt trip, I figured now would be a good time to let Sean take over and simply teach me by example how to complete the job. They really just need to be uh, hand tight. I don't have a filter wrench that fits this size, but on the engine and the generator, I'll get them hand tight and then maybe just a quarter turn with a wrench, but you certainly don't want to overdo it or you'll really struggle getting them off the next time you do an oil change. Generator, so the filter is inside the sound enclosure. So I'm gonna just release the front cover. Same thing, reinstalling the new filter, pull it out of the box, try to get some used oil and rub it on the seal. Install the new filter. Same thing for the oil filter in the main. I'm gonna loosen it with my wrench. Last 
the to-do list is filling each engine with new oil. Every boat is obviously different, so we highly recommend you refer to your owner's manual to find out which specific oil your engine requires. I've finished adding the oil. Last thing to do is check to make sure that I put the right amount in. So I'm gonna pull the dipstick out. I'll clean it off the first time. And I'm gonna reinsert it. And when I pull it up, the oil should be between these, these two dots. That's the low marker, that's the high marker. So I'll go ahead and reinsert it. And then I will pull it out. And you'll see that the oil level is just up to the high marker. So that's perfect. Same thing, here's the dipstick. There's a low level marker. There's a little rib down there. And there's a high level marker. So I wiped it off and reinsert it and do a check. So. I'm at about the halfway mark. I'll probably end up adding just a little bit more. Okay, now we're gonna fill the main engine. It's the last remaining engine. And here you wanna be between the Double zeros in the waffled area. I'm going to give the oil a little bit of time to settle, but it's above the double O's. I think we're good. We'll end up running the engine and check it again. So we'll start the engines, let them run for 30 seconds to a minute or so, and then we'll come back down and check the oil. If it looks good, we're good to go. Otherwise, we'll top off as necessary. After a little warm up, everything appeared to be A-OK. -okay. Although this was more time consuming than I originally thought, changing the oil and filters on a Nordhaven 43 isn't really too hard and definitely something I think I'll try from start to finish next time around. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one and others sharing our adventures on the water. See you guys next time.